Welcome to the stream room. Yes, it is a name change, but what a name change, and we feel all so good about it. This week, we will be discussing some major things with some major partners of Twitch who have got a different streaming schedule than what you think they may have. Also, what did we learn this week from exactly what we streamed, what was good, what was bad, and everything in between? But I am Reaps, one of the digital buskers. Hello, I'm LJ. And I'm Nick. Hello. Hello, Nick. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> How do we feel about the name change? Do we feel different? Do we feel great? I love it. I know that. Yep. I, so I caused a problem for you boys by essentially while we were trying to come up with the branding and the stuff for the suggested podcast, I said, hey, you know how I came up with the name suggested podcast and we all agreed and liked it? Well, what if instead we didn't like it and we went with something else? <laughs> <laughs> and then, which started like a few weeks over Christmas of us having to come up with names. But I feel like I've redeemed myself because I still, I, I managed to come back hard and go, what about stream room and mm -hmm. pitch it back? I, I think yep. it, it does work it though, right? I think it, 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 it fixes the problem of suggested podcast doesn't say streaming and content related podcast. You know what I mean? Correct. Exactly. It, it and, was clever. It was smart. We appreciated it. Uh, it's just, <laughs> and that may also answer why we've done these kind of cryptic tweets on our Twitter and everything like that. Because we're like, if it's going to be a stream room, we should probably show people our stream room. And as you can see, uh, without the green screen, it's it's not much. God, I really hope we end up yep. doing those tweets now. <laughs> <laughs> Cut this out um, if we don't do tweets, reaps in the future. Thank you, reaps from the past. Um, okay, so so you already mentioned a bit of what's on the docket today, and I'm pretty excited mm -hmm. to to jump into all of this. Um, but kicking it off straight out the gate, we were going to do a little bit about what we were streaming uh, this past week that's gone, um, what we tried out, what we've learned this past week, um, any big fails or any big successes, and then just generally to get the ball rolling. And hot seat, our good friend Nick. How have you done this week? What have you been up to? And how did it go? Yeah, uh, so things have been going pretty good. I've shifted to a regular sort of starting with just chatting, going off some things we've talked about and also uh, some of your suggestions as well, LJ. And uh, that has been going really well. We're doing like an hour to two hours of, uh, of just chatting. We do a little wordle, have a bit of fun. And uh, obviously trying to do more sort of uh, dedicated just chatting segments that I can then go and turn into YouTube content. Like we did a uh, like a, a, a buying stream where people suggested gifts that, and then they had to vote on the thing I had to buy. We did uh, uh, rating the 30 uh, dumbest questions ever asked on the internet. We've done a bunch of that fun stuff. And so that's all going to be recycled and reused on YouTube. So it's been really awesome. And I've just been enjoying Mass Effect 3 and being emotionally traumatized by it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, can I ask you a big question that I feel like is something that a lot of people are going to ask as small streamers when it came to the yeah. just chatting sections, how many, like, I feel like with every just chatting section, I always try and plan a bit like something like a tier list or something right to do. But do you plan yeah. general talking points or things you want to talk about before you go into just chatting? Uh, sometimes it depends sort of, sort of like what's happening in the week. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, pl I'm planning, so working towards actually having a plan for ev to the start of every stream. So it actually having a bit or at the very least, yeah, just having some general talking points. So sometimes we just kind of go with the flow. Um, but yeah, I want to have at least two streams every week where they start with an actual bit that will get used in a YouTube video. So that's nice. the plan for that. Yeah. Reeves, Reeves, you just, you do just chatting at the start, don't you? I do. I've done that uh, for a long time, actually, uh, just trying, but it was not into the sense of I'm going to make this for a YouTube bit. It was just more just to get a feel of the community and what everyone's up to, just, you know, welcoming, welcoming them in, making sure that they feel loved and everything like that. But uh, I, I was planning this year to obviously do exactly the same thing, but I have had it laryngitis for the past uh, two weeks or so. <laughs> so it's kind of completely all the wind has gone out of my cells. And it's just been about recovery. The first stream back I did was two hours and I was struggling. Like I've never felt that, you know, you look at the clock and the second hand starts going backwards yeah. because of how you feel. It was that bad, but I just felt like I had to drop in. It was this weird kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anxiety of the fact that I haven't been streaming for about 10 days. I promised people, but I'd be back on January 2nd or 3rd, whatever it was. And I get to stream until January 10th. Yeah. And that was for two hours. And then I just felt guilty as sin. But in terms of how the week went for me, good. Um, people welcomed me back, which is always, is scared because you think they've left they've found some new streamer did you, and they've did you have a high number when he came back yeah. 
Did you, like, did you have the high number when you came back? That's my big I, question I, for you guys. Oh, I no, I, I don't think so. I, I I got like a good viewing um, average and everything like that, but I, I don't think it was a huge number. Because I, yeah. I, there's the whole concept of when these big streamers get banned, they come mm -hmm. back with a higher number because they've been gone, right? Yeah. And there's a there's a big discussion about whether or not when someone comes back for the first time, do they get do they get big numbers? Um, and I'm looking at I, you actually, Reeves. You did all right, mm -hmm. man. But you actually had some for your, you. Yeah, you got like 134 average on your your yeah. big stream back. Your four and a half hour. Uh, yeah. Which and normally you only do like like 120. Like that's yeah, yeah, something about that. Um, it was really nice. Like I, I'm not sure. It seems like a lot of people are trending up because I do think that when it comes around Christmas time or festive season, whatever you celebrate, people are just busy, man. Mm -hmm. And now that everyone's kind of gone back to work and back into their routines, and especially with Omicron and you know the lockdowns around the world, people are kind of going back to Twitch a bit more. Maybe yeah. uh, uh, making sure their streamers are still doing what they're doing. So yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I found like right, yeah. picking the right games in January, it, it's always a good month. Yeah. It's always a good month, yeah. Yeah. Well, Very on, true. on my first week back, I'll tell you what, I have not picked the right game, but it's fine because I'm loving it. Um, <laughs> I, so I came back pretty strong. I, I came back with um, the idea that I was, this whole year for me is about um, essentially I don't want to give a f about my average viewership, right? Like mm -hmm. I purely just want to be Agreed. making content that can be turned into um, YouTube videos and I want to get that up and running, right? But I came back and I kind of came into this with the concept of I want to start Skyrim Survival, right? Like, and I want to do a long playthrough, like an entire month of Skyrim Survival. Now, if you don't know Skyrim Survival, it's essentially you play Skyrim, but they've added temperature, hunger, fatigue, everything, right? So it's pretty much like a hardcore Ooh. version of it. You can't, yeah. Um, yeah, you, if you don't sleep enough, you uh, you get more fatigued and you, you just die. If you don't eat food, you just die. If you are out in the cold, you freeze to death. All armor has like a warmth rating now. And like you can go camping, fishing, everything. It is so f***ing cool, all right? That's awesome, actually. And, and I came back and I was like, cool, I'm going to do Skyrim. It's going to be sick. First stream back, we did so well like we, we we did really really well my night streams right now don't do huge but first stream back was 150 and it was so much fun playing skyrim that's but awesome then i did my amazon buy stream and a bunch of other just chatting segments and i didn't get to play skyrim for two more for like another week <laughs> 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 and got to play and then he's and then yeah you had to like wait and you're just itch, were you just itching to get back to it were you just I, like because you're having so much fun i absolutely was and, I, and the thing is right and i, I absolutely like, it's, it's just so much fun right to do it and the thing that i'm struggling with a little bit is the fact that um because the last few months i have seen a dip for my nighttime streams but an increase for my daytime streams I, it's been tough because when you go into skyrim everyone kind of goes a little bit quiet right because they mm -hmm. they get back to work you know they've just gone to the point where they have to do their laundry or their dishes or whatever it is they're starting their day um and that's a bit tough but also it's so much better for skyrim because there's so many characters that are running around doing crazy stuff or talking or you'll be walking down like a, 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 a random path in the forest and someone will run up to you called frightened woman because this is actually what happened i just finished doing like a little like uh, clearing out a cabin that had just one witch in it and i walk outside and there's a woman she's called frightened woman and I start, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And she won't talk to me. She starts sprinting away from me. I chase her. She just runs to a cliff, leaps off, dies. <laughs> and I'm just like stunned. Like, what the hell is happening? And it's just like, everyone in chat's just like, that's Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> what a catchphrase. Dead yeah. Skyrim, guys. <laughs> Todd Howard. Uh, but I was, I was thinking about that as well because there's a kind, there's a thing called RL Craft, and I'm sure she actually would love a shout out for this. But as you know, it's real life Minecraft yeah. with exactly the same things that you mentioned. That's got a huge following. I remember like Mizkiff played it. I think it's those games, kind of like streams in general, where you've got a concept, and if you put in a little twist to it, it becomes that much more uh, watchable, that much more yeah. content to it. But uh, you talk about obviously the fact that it is so hard to do like Skyrim, the, the game itself, and it's so memorable. But what would, how would you feel if every single day, let's just say Monday through to Sunday, you had to play this game? Do you think that you'd be able to hack it? Like it's kind of, oh yeah, I love this. Like everybody has when they first discover something, but then you get yeah. to the grind of it all. God, no, I, I, I'm yeah. a variety streamer from the day one. And the reason is mm. because I never want anyone to assume that I am a one, one game Andy. And the yeah. reason for that is, is that, and I'm not going to say names of anyone or anything like that. The only one I will mention is EO because uh, she's a good streaming mate of mine. 
but like I I could never do what she does. She is such a legend. She does Animal Crossing, right? Like mm-hmm. she will pound out the Animal Crossing content on TikTok, on YouTube, and on 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 uh and on Twitch as well. And she does it so well. She's been doing it now for I guess 15 months, Animal Crossing yeah. mostly as her main game, and she's doing so well. Um, she's surpassed me now, which doesn't surprise me because she's much funnier than I am. I've pretty much come to terms <laughs> with that. Um, and oh, don't see yourself short. Yeah, no, on, no, no, EO though. I'm selling her up. You know, I know oh, I'm fucking that? hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so she's doing so good. Um, and she does amazing content as well in her niche, but she is obviously stuck in her niche, right? Like mm-hmm. if you go through a Twitch tracker and you look at some of our other streams, she'll get like 200 average, uh, viewers easily doing animal crossing. But then she switches to do a little bit of Mario Party superstars near the end, and you just see it starts trend trend down. Yeah, because people are just so intense about wanting one type of content, yeah. which is like such a hard thing to get stuck in. And the only way you can get out of that is by doing like Animal Crossing for three hours, and then I'm gonna wrap the stream up with this other thing that is similar to your demographic for the last two hours. You know what well, I, I mean? Gonna, like, yeah, yeah, it, that's exactly right. You've got to kind of segue one to the other, but I guess that's kind of harder or maybe easier to do if you've got to do 200 hours a month nick yes oh, this is the valky thing yeah yeah. Mm. yes beautiful segue but yes it's Thank like you. yeah i mean it's it's yeah hard enough to do 200 hours a month playing games but if you're doing the same thing mm. for 200 hours month after month oh yeah so this to clarify because i brought you guys this this stat but i didn't mm. clarify it whatsoever i just told you like i just sent you a message being like holy shit Look at this. Essentially, Valky a few months ago was live and Ludwig wanted to do something or like she, he, he wanted to try to get her banned as a joke, right? And she said, man, I have to stream 200 hours this month or else I break my contract. So the thing is, we don't know if it's 200 hours every month or if she just mm-hmm. missed a bunch of days and she had to get a certain number up. But either way, 200 hours means you're doing 6.5 hours every single day. I... That no, is insane. I, I right. struggle with four days. That's right. You know what I mean? And and that's not not saying I don't like doing it, but the amount of energy, like, I don't know what, if it's the same with uh, you fellas, but the amount of energy after I do a stream, even if it's a four-hour stream to six-hour stream, I'm dead afterwards. I just want to eat and just go into hibernation for like two days or something because it is just so much energy expended. But yep. to do 200 hours in a month, regardless of the variables or the circumstances, is crazy talk. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, no, it's just insane. It's 10 hours a day if she doesn't stream weekends. But but you do, you're, like, you're not going to do 10 hours a day. You're going to stream no. your weekends if you have to do that, right? Yeah. And again, it, it may have just been that she'd missed a bunch of days and that particular month she had to stream 200 hours to catch up or she has to do that every time. I, I, it'd be insane if she had to do that every time. But also it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me because Valky got picked up when she was much smaller by YouTube gaming. So it wouldn't surprise me if to get that contract in, they said, we want this many hours every single month, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, but and- even then it just seems just like crazy. It's like, she doesn't even get a single day off unless she has to frame it so that she, she gets a day off and she has to spread that six and a half mm. from that day over the rest of the days. But it's just, I, I, it's just so. It just seems inconceivable to even can, like think that they like they like. Oh yeah, you can absolutely do two hundred hours a month. Sure. <laughs> well, it's really strange, right? Because I, I, this triggered a a moment for me. I do these things, right, where sometimes someone will tell me a stat, and I'll go, "What the hell?" And then I'll just go into this deep dive, and I'll go find how long everyone else streams. <coughs> Sorry, water in my throat. I'll be like, "How how long does every other big streamer stream and stuff like that?" Or like someone will be like oh yeah, I'm two years in and this is my average viewership and I'll suddenly go and I'll look at every streamer I know around my size and how what their viewership was for the first five years, every like on each of the year anniversary. But I have the stats here, if you want, Please. on each of the large streamers and I'm going to say a streamer and I want you guys to try and predict how many hours a month they stream, all right? And then what's going to happen is whoever wins, I'll give you, I'll give you a gold star. Fantastic. Game um, time. I was, I was wondering, is this the previous what? month or is this like an average over a year? Uh, no, this is just this is just the previous month. So this okay, is great, 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 great. this is last 30 days, but I think I got this data for you guys in December. So it was like I think I got it like the 20th of December. So this will be from the 20th of December until like the 20th of Nov. But I did look and it's pretty consistent. Like these guys don't change much. They're pretty spot on. Okay. Um, okay. I want to start right. with the big dog. Let's start with the biggest guy on Twitch, English speaking at least. 
Mm -hmm. XQC, how many hours, and I don't want to see any fingers on keyboards here, no Googling, how many hours a month do you think that XQC streams, at least in that period I mentioned? I know for a fact this man is insane. Uh, (laughs) Oh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, like, if I do a quick maths in my head, which I'm terrible at, but I'm going to say 250 hours last month. 250 hours. Okay, cool. Uh... Crap, that was around about what I was going to say. Well, closest <laughs> wins, so, you know, 251 and, yeah, you know, or, or, 249 you or 249. You prick if you do I, that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say about 280. Because I know he does long streams, like, every day. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a winner. It is Nick, because XQC streamed 289 hours in the period <laughs> in which I checked. Ooh, far out. My God, that man. That's crazy, How could right? you... Even like I, I don't know mentally where you go if you are streaming that long every day looking at a, t- a screen. Just to be fair, it was like a lot of Master Chef. Yeah. Yeah. He's essentially just doing like a subathon, but just going to bed for like six, seven hours. Essentially, yeah. it's pretty crazy. I, 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 I don't think I could ever do something like that. Like I don't even like the idea of doing a twenty-four hour stream because I feel no, like that I, was hell. I, Dude, in yeah. a four-hour stream, I'd say that maybe there's like two hours worth of content that I'm proud of, and the other two hours is probably like mediocre filler. or you know filler. Yeah, yeah right. Like, yeah. like I couldn't imagine trying to do twelve hours a day, essentially, right? Like that's just insane. That is honestly mental. Like I think there was a video of him, and he showed around his room. The man lives like he's on the streets. Like it's there crazy. was food left over from three to four days ago open bottles of every it was disgusting oh, i was God. like how do you live like this the smell alone would just drive me insane but i, I guess he, he has his own place right so he's not like a like like reliving with roommates where he just no, no, he's got his own place. Place. I think he has a partner yeah. but also i feel bad yeah. for the guy right because he's had to move like and you might I, I, you can fact check me on this if you're listening listeners but he's had to move two or three times because of people stalking Swat. or swatting or mm-hmm. delivering pizzas or hundreds of pizzas to him like so many things like that and like during the gambling craze he was also considering moving to canada so he could gamble which is crazy um <laughs> but like oh god these were the, like the, I, I, you got to feel for someone of that size right like to have to do that um yeah but at the same time you know I, I, you can't hire a, like a, a cleaner or something to come to your house because you, the room they need to clean you're in for like 15 hours a day yep, yep. Ex- exactly it's mm-hmm. just, he, it's just, just he, he just he said he has two stream setups he just switches while the other one's getting cleaned <laughs> that would, that's so big brain i wouldn't put it past yeah it. That is, yeah that's so big brain i think my favorite thing i've ever seen on stream by the way is uh soda popping i remember i was watching soda popping and i feel really glad to say that i was there for this and he was in a giant inflatable uh boat on his bed and he was wearing a life jacket and he was there and he had titanic music blaring and while he's there pretending to like be sailing this like inflatable boat with his paddle and stuff, his cleaner walks in. <sighs> and he's just like, Dude. he's just like, ah, oh, you don't have to do this room. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, but that man, that man takes shame. Like it's, I don't know, like popcorn. He, he knows he's weathered that storm. He's been on there for so long. Dude, like, I used he, to watch him when he was like, when he was like a 15 year old or whatever it was. Yeah. And he was playing. Wow. Just, like he, he's the reason I picked a feral uh, as my class as World of Warcraft. Like the dude's. Been, wow. Yeah. It's, it's insane, man. Um, he's with another one. Super old school. Okay, yeah. I got another one for you. So XQC, really, I think he's really high energy, right? Or at least he has mm-hmm. really high bursts of energy. So let's go with yes. someone who I think is super, super chill. Shroud. How many oh, hours geez. do you think Shroud, who is just the guy who's like sitting there, chill, has some pro gameplay, and then every now and then pops off and goes, you see that, guys? Yeah. And then just keeps yeah. going. Yeah. Oh, that's a oh, that's a really tough one, actually. Because yeah, I remember he he's he's like a big grinder. When New World came out, he was on there for twelve hours a yeah. day, like yeah. crazy yeah. three day. economies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, last month December, it's Christmas time. Is it? Well, November? Remember, I, sorry, this is from like twentieth of December to twentieth of November ish. Yes. So. Um, I'm gonna go with. Well, I'm gonna go a little lower. I'm gonna say one eighty. One eighty. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say 160. Ooh, okay, interesting. You were pretty close on the mark, sort of, Reaps, by saying he's a grinder because he did 253 hours in the 30-day oh period, God. I checked. 
What? In the 30 day period I checked, that man had done 253 hours. I'll double check now. Shit. I'm gonna double check the notes, but I'm pretty sure he did. And it was, what? it was insane, actually insane. I don't oh my understand God. So it. So even in the last 30 days, he's done 200 hours. Just in the last 30 days, he's done 200. And that was obviously over Christmas where he took some time off. But yeah, he did, he did 253 when I checked the other, the other period, which is crazy. Right. I feel like that makes yeah. it makes more sense for him to me, though. Right. Because he's not there intensely going, woo, let's go. Like super excited yeah. all the time. He's super chill. People are watching him for the gameplay. He's doing his thing and he's, he's just a good time. Right. Yeah. So it's not like he's expending crap loads of energies. It's just like XQC, no, that's true. I feel like he's just pushing hard constantly. Right. Like, I just want to say as well, um, I just did some quick math there, otherwise known as a calculator. So I did 30, um, obviously, times by 24, and that's 720 hours in a month. So if you try and break that down, that's nearly half of his time has been spent online. And you think about what, there's eight hours, 10 hours of sleep for these guys. Yeah. They must have like an eighth free time to do what they want to do. Well, remember, these, are, these guys have contracts. They yeah. have come back to Twitch or they're going to YouTube like Valky has and they've signed a contract saying they're going to stream on this platform and not just stream, they're going to make sure they stream a certain amount like they have to because otherwise what's the point of contracting someone and then them not fulfilling their hours, aka not bringing the platform money? Yeah. yeah well, here's, the, here's the thing, right? So back when like Mixer collapsed and, you know, uh, Shroud and Ninja got their payout, right? They got their full payout for not even doing their full-term contract. Yep. Um, and then like, they just came back to Twitch. Like they just came back to Twitch on their own. Like, I don't think Twitch would have then reached out to them. was like, Hey, we want to pay you to come back. Like, I, 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 unless I, I don't could think be they, wrong. I don't think they would have reached out necessarily to say, Hey, we want you to come back. But I definitely think that when they did come back, there were conversations. I feel like you mm. don't have conversations. I, I feel like you're not the kind of thing to like, yeah, I'll just let them come back without a real partner contract. Like those yeah. are the yeah. those guys are the are the big big right like the fear for Twitch is not locking them in because that's I think that's Twitch's biggest thing with these contracts from what people have said is they may not pay the best but they damn well will lock you in for as long as they can yeah <laughs> yeah so, like any business really yeah, yeah they just like, lock you yeah exactly so yeah. okay it's next like, yeah. if we oh, no, you, if you have anything else Nick no 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 just, that's right all good oh, cool. okay <laughs> next oh, we're almost halfway through okay uh, similar to Shroud. But a little mm -hmm. bit of a different audience demographic. Summit 1G. How much do you think Summit 1G streamed? Listen, when I tuned into Summit, um, he was doing a big thing about like race car driving. Um, mm -hmm. So that was his meta at the time. And he seems like a guy who would do shroud type hours. So I'm just going to go a little bit less and I'm going to say 225. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nick, how are you feeling? Yeah. I, I agree with that statement. He's definitely got, he definitely puts in more energy than Shroud does. That's for sure. He would definitely mm -hmm. have his outbursts, but I, and he's definitely got, he, he has a more consistent kind of energy level as well yeah. throughout his streams. Okay. But then again, like the man just enjoys what he does as well. So, <laughs> uh, crap. I'm, mm, I'm going to say 210. 210. Okay. All right. You're both very off. 286 hours is what he did in the period that I checked, but I've pulled him up again to confirm. He's actually done more over the Christmas break. He did 311 hours in the last 30 days. What? Okay. Did I, he I'm, even I'm, shower? <laughs> 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 they just hose him down and go, there you go, boy. Yeah. Wash yourself with a rag on a stick. Um, I, I remember a time specifically about Summit 1G, and I just brought up, uh, thought of it then because of what you brought up with nearly 300 hours. I remember when Valorant just came out. It, it wasn't just coming out, so it was the beta. And Summit was one of the people who had drops on. And his oh God, viewership yeah. was hundreds of thousands. I'm talking crazy. I was like, why is so many people what why is so many people watching Summit? It was the drops for Valorant back in the day. I have never seen a person so miserable, but simply doing it because he had his highest subscriber count at the time. It was getting yeah. more and more by the day. He like you could see into his eyes and he was physically checked out sorry mentally checked out but physically he was a husk of a human being grinding 16 hours a day for like 30 days it was mental you know amaranth said something in her vice documentary which obviously i watched as soon as it came out 
And I watched it as soon as you told me it came out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will now go and watch it. Yeah, you better. <laughs> Amaranth's our queen. All right. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I watched it. And one of the things she said in it was, you know, I'm young right now. I have the energy. I have the body. And I have the ability to do these things. I won't always have that energy, the time. So why shouldn't I grind right now? Which I yep. think is such an interesting thing to say because I totally agree. But I also come at it from a completely different perspective as well. Because to me, I want to make a bunch of evergreen content like the YouTube channel mm -hmm. I've got so that I can relax now and later. You yes. know what I mean? Like I, I don't want to yeah. do 250 hours this month streaming, especially because, A, we'll get into it later, but that's a terrible idea. But yeah. like I don't want to do that and ruin my life because I don't get to see friends or family or blah, blah, blah. Correct. And then later when I'm old, I don't get to see friends and family because I'm old. You know what I mean? Like, it's, and, and they've and all she, just disregarded you because you're like, ah, where have you been for the last 10 years? Right? Exactly. Yeah. You don't make new friends. And one of the big things from that documentary that I really took away was, I think it's something that we all kind of deal with being in this profession because it's literally just you in a room. She talked about how lonely she was. Yeah. Like the only times that she went out was to go to see her horses, you know, um, in the stables where they were. And she doesn't have time to see friends or family at the moment because, you know, she's making 1.5 mil a month. And she's like, I don't know how long this is going to continue for. So I'm going to keep there. But I just couldn't imagine the mental exhaustion and the strain and the anxiety at nights. You know, you've got to do it all over again, like Groundhog Day each and every day. The same, same thing, dealing with abuse and... Yeah. Uh, poof. She's I honestly would not the hardest be working person on Twitch. I yes. got to say it. Like no one yeah. else. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would I I would guarantee that she's like at least having like she's like a regular appointment with someone to like just expel all of that mental frustration and toll because there's no way there's no way you can just deal with that on your own you got to have like, hey man, someone if she's on the dock she gets time to right like if yeah. she, like that's that, the, that's thing, the right? thing right mm. it's it's insane it's just crazy what she does um I'll, I'll look what, up, what I'll is look she mainly doing content wise like because I know she has a lot of ASMR but is that like she does Mainly what ASMR. She, she does kind of just dance streams. Uh, she does, you know, video games like Mario Kart and stuff. She says that she likes variety, but it was interesting seeing her talk about trends and what trends down for her. Mm. She says that a big one for her is like ASMR in terms of viewership and just dance, are like her big um, earners uh, on the Twitch platform, not her other avenues. Yeah. So what's really interesting, right? I'm not going to make you guys guess this one because I'm pretty sure she talks about it in the um, in the doco. So it's a little bit unfair. Mm -hmm. um, but so in the last 30 days, she's done 351 hours. And this is the part that really <laughs> sinks this in is the fact that none of that is rerun time. So, yeah. so sometimes large streamers will throw a rerun on, right? And that will still get counted towards like these hours. But Amaranth doesn't do any rerun time, even though she's tried it in the past. And she saw that her when she went live, her viewership would drop if she had reruns because people didn't feel like they had to be there. They didn't feel mm -hmm. like it was an event, right? Because every stream is essentially eventized content. You don't want to miss out. It's live now and never mm -hmm. again. Yeah. And so she, all 351 hours of this are her live on Twitch. That is crazy. 351 yep. hours in 30 days. Like, what is What does that <sighs> average out like every day? 11 hours a day. Fucking hell. Mate. Like Jeez. there's two things I want to bring up right now. And that's the simple fact of if you had that amount of money per month, 1.5 million, this is a question for the listener. This is a question for you as well. Uh, if you got $1.5 million a month, would, and it's guaranteed that if you did this amount of hours that you would get it, would you grind through just knowing that you've set yourself up for life? Or would you take it from the perspective of my happiness my sorry, my unhappiness comes at the cost of one point five million dollars a month. How would you frame it to yourself if you were given that opportunity? Like guaranteed, you will make a, a killing if you do this amount of time. Would you? I think a lot of people would say, "I would do it." I, I, here's my thing, right? I would do it for one to three months, make the bank, invest the mm -hmm. bank, set myself up to be comfortable uh, for a little bit. Like I don't need. I'm not, not going to be setting myself up for life, but I can at mm -hmm. very least buy a house. Right, mm -hmm. like in, in Australia, yeah. one point five mil that'll get you a very nice house in my yes. area. Right, like I, I'll mm -hmm. be set with like a probably eight bedroom, pretty much. <laughs> right, like I I do one to three months, I'd get bank and then I'd cut my stream hours in half, and I'd be I'd be fine with that. Yeah, like, like at the end yeah. of the day, I'd be fine with that. Right, and if, even if that one point five turned into five hundred because I cut it in half, I'd still be fine with that. Actually, honestly, 
I wouldn't do a hundred and what was it? She's doing 11 hours a day, 351. I wouldn't even do half of that. I would do like what I'm doing now. Yep. <laughs> like, I yeah. Would that's where I'm comfortable myself. Yeah. I, 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 I definitely agree. Like I would definitely be, uh, I think at the start it'd be like, Oh, this is exciting. This money's coming in. But yeah, I, I think you're right. It'd be like, yeah, the 1.5 million is the cost of the unhappiness of doing mm-hmm. that many hours every single day for the entire month. But yeah, I agree with LJ. Like you just, you got to think smart with your money. Like if you're getting good money, like invest it, set yourself up. And, I then, think that's also, and, then, yeah, you, the- and then you ease out. Yeah, that is the perfect segue as well for um, LJ, as you were talking about before, why you should probably not be doing these hours because you see big time streamers doing it. Because I Mm. think that is such a common trap is that people do it because they're like, this is all the big time streamers are doing it and they become successful. No, no, they become successful and now they're doing it to uh, cash in on that success, I think. I, I, I definitely agree with that as well. And I think one of the creators who I respect the most on the platform when it comes to hours invested in this is actually Pokimane because Mm -hmm. uh, um, she, when we, when I checked all this out, she only did 70 hours in the period that I looked. Um, And I, I, I've listened to her a lot talk about this. I actually don't watch her stream much. She's just not on when I can, but I've listened to her on like podcasts and other things. And one of the things she always talks about is the fact that streamers are so scared. These big streamers are so scared to take breaks because mm-hmm. they are they are making huge bank right now. So they, they just grind it out for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, and they're scared not to be live, right? Like terrified yep. not to be live. Guaranteed. And she says that that's just terrible and that Twitch promotes it, right? Like she doesn't like the fact that Twitch inherently encourages and creates an environment where they're forced to do this, right? Mm-hmm. And so she's really outspoken about it, only 70 hours. And small streamers, rather than take after someone like Pokimane, who's talking about like balance, health, diversification of content, they go and they take after the summits. They go and they take after the, the XQCs and the shrouds who do like these 200, 300 hours. I know so many small streamers who have commented on my videos or post in the Discord who do triple my hours to mm-hmm. zero viewers. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how they do it. Like, it makes no sense to me. And also, it's so undiscoverable the way they do it. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Every, we all agree, right? That just Twitch discoverability isn't great. There's a lot of issues on it. But I think all three of us, before we had any extra funnels or TikToks or YouTubes or collaborations or networks, all of us, we grew from like zero to 30 or zero to more than that without a YouTube channel. Correct. I think yeah. Reaps, you grew to 120 average without a YouTube channel, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and Nick, you grew to like where you are now, 100, 120 without really having a hard YouTube channel or anything like bringing in external. You had collabs. Yeah, not really and- much. Yeah. And I got to, I got to 120, 130 before I started the stream scheme YouTube channel. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, we all agree that Twitch discoverability, it lacks, but here's the thing. If you go into it with a smart idea and you position yourself in categories that people are very beloved, right? Like that are really active Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Stardew Valley, or, or Sims 3 or any of these things, right? That are super active, beloved, not just on Twitch, but across like all the platforms. And people are actively seeking more content of it, but it's not like the peak, like Minecraft. Mm-hmm. You can grow so quickly on Twitch because majority of small streamers, the 99.999% are in like four categories. They're in Valorant, yeah. Apex, Minecraft, and Fortnite. That's where mm-hmm. most of them are. And they're just streaming with the title Chill Vibes and they're not being <laughs> discovered. And then they go to the R Twitch subreddit and they start spamming about the fact that Twitch discoverability is terrible. I streamed 200 hours this month and I didn't get any viewership. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, do half of that in Stardew Valley or a category that's small that you like, like like XCOM 2. And fuck, dude, you'll be at 20 viewers in a month. Like, yeah. yeah, I I see it. Hey, and I, I've seen it happen. Like a lot of friends of mine at the moment and like some friends in the past, like they just, they picked their categories right and they kind of went from category to category and then kind of worked their way up. They kind of looked at their you know, their, what their average viewership was at the time. And they're like, okay, they looked at some games. Where would I generally sit if I streamed in this category at my usual time slot? Would I be in the top row? Would I be in the second row? Or would I get flooded down? And then yep. they kind of use that as a basis. And is this a popular game? And kind of, yeah, just kind of climb climb your way up. Yeah, um, it's totally like, doable. It, it is really doable. Is. My, my, my favorite though uh, was uh, recently in one of LJ's stream, uh, a lovely viewer came in and was like, Oh man, I love your videos. You've helped me so much. Oh, I took your advice. This. I'm streaming every single day. 
It got worse, boys. It got way worse after that, Nick. I don't know if you were still there, but I said to him, hey, man, if you like my videos and you've been watching me, then you should know that I don't recommend streaming every day. I recommend streaming three, maximum four times for three to four hours each time and then spend mm -hmm. the rest of that time planning your content, making a content strategy, being discoverable, working hard on those things because streaming should be a hobby with a strategy and a plan attached to it if you're trying to grow. He didn't hit me back with a, yeah, I totally understand. I just got plenty of time, so I'm doing it. He hit me back with a, it's fine, man. I'm all in. I quit my job for this. I got this. I'm going to be able to do it. And I was in such a tough spot because this guy clearly has looked up to me, right? And I was like, he's got, he's not listened to anything I've said, clearly. He just like likes the idea of it. Because I'm not, I don't sell snake oil on the channel, right? Like I have a whole video called uh, The Truth where I just tell them, you're probably not going to make it right? There's no money. Yeah. You're not going to make it. This sucks. It's hard. Right. Um, and I was in such a tough spot. So I just literally just said, bud, I do not recommend the fact that you've quit your job. I really, really, in every single one of my videos, I say, don't quit your job, treat it as a hobby, be discoverable, do these things, blah, 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 blah. And everyone in chat was like, yeah, not as, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, he's yeah. actually telling the truth. And I was thinking maybe he's going to just leave. Maybe he's going to say something else. And he hits me with this. He goes, Lol, don't worry, man. I, I I reckon I can pull this off. I got this. Um, anyway, if you want, feel free to raid me later. Oh, okay. I need to leave. I'm sorry. I'm done for the day. I'm done. And like, I, he totally, the totally means well. He's not a terrible person, right? Of course, not. Make fun of course of him. not. But this isn't, this no. isn't just one guy. This is like the majority. Like yeah. This is the majority of people who want to be content creators. Also, and this isn't a go at um, juices in any way. I actually think that I hate the concept of what people will do to XQC's chat by saying they're mm -hmm. all just the same when the reality yeah. is the majority of XQC's chat are just guys who like XQC, right? Like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with them. But I do think it says a lot that he was saying all this with an XQC emote in every single message. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. It he's, just, really, yeah, he's, mm. he's, he's mimicking XQC, right? Like that's yeah. what he wants to do. He sees XQC do it. Yeah. He thinks this is how I do it. I'm going to mimic all of this. When the reality is, is that XQC got his start from being a pro Overwatch player. Right? Indeed. And then he transitioned from being a pro Overwatch player to being an entertaining streamer, right? And I think that's one of the big things is like, where where is your discovery, where is your discovery going to be from? Right. Yeah. If you're able to stream every single day and that's where your discovery is, similar to how, no, not, not every single day, but if you're able to just stream and that's where your discovery is, similar to how Reaps did it or Nick did it or I did it when we first started, mm -hmm. right? That's great. But there is going to be a cap. If your discovery is going to be that you have a really good TikTok, you understand TikTok, you know, is it going to be on YouTube? Everyone has a different way to be discovered. But I will tell you right now, the one way you will never be discovered is doing every single day, five to 12 hour streams in those categories where you'll never be seen. Yep. Right? Yep. Like it's just impossible. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, now, uh, in a uh, in a video that Devin released, he talked about some uh, some stats where it's like uh, I don't know if this uh, you guys had seen this video um, where the they basically this I think it was called Streamax, I could be getting the name wrong. Essentially oh, they yeah. took this data. Yeah, and that if you look at all of like the top 10, 20, like 30 streamers, well it was like English speaking they focused on uh, about 20% are the same people. 20% yeah. of their total audiences are the same people. Yeah. So you've got all of these massive streamers grinding so many hours and then like a good 20% chunk of all those people are just the same people, like, you know, having multiple tabs up or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, or just being transferred around as they all go yeah. online, yeah. offline, as stuff happens. Like, like Ludwig's even said on his stream uh, before when he used to be on Twitch that one of the things he could do was that he would, if he someone hadn't been replying to his DMs when he was live, he'd just say, can someone find out if XQC is coming to the event? Can someone just go ask him? Suddenly 5,000 people go to his chat and go, are you going to an event? XQC says on live, live on stream. Oh yeah, I'll go to that. And then they all come back and they go, he says he'll come to that. And Ludwig's like, cool. Because these guys don't <laughs> even check Discord. They're so heavily grinding. So the best way yeah. is to have the chat go do it. That's yeah. <laughs> It, it's it like use, the, use the masses to just go go yeah. and do, you, do your work. Fly That's my insane. pretties, but, fly. It's do, exactly. Do you, yeah. Mm. Do, do you think that um, because of such a large chunk that's watching the, these audiences and the fact that they're all rotating around doing all these long hours, like that anybody watching these, these big streamers, like they almost, they don't feel the need to even look 
for other streamers on Twitch because they've mm -hmm. they've got mm. they've always they're, the streamers are always live. They yep. won't know. So we like know I, we know I, it is as well. Yeah. We looked at the data, so we actually yeah. we, did, we did a poll on this, and I think I told you guys about this maybe a while back, and I'd have to try and track it down again. Um, and I won't be able to do it right now while while we're here, but we did a poll and we found that like the majority of people never even look at the uh, at the front page of Twitch. They go yep. straight to their favorite streamer. If their favorite streamer is online, they go check their followed list. But then right after that, they just go straight to the favorite category they like, right? Yeah. And it's like, it, it, it's so, so tough. And I think that's one of the reasons why external funnels are so heavily pushed and explained is because the majority of Twitch already has their favorite streamer. Yes. Right? They, 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 the, the way that you will get people to come into your stream and become your favorite streamer is just by being discovered. And because people have a favorite streamer already, the, one of the easiest ways to do that is from YouTube because those guys are on YouTube not watching their favorite streamer. Yes. Like, so it's just Correct. so much simpler. Um, yeah. But also <laughs> I think... The, yeah. No, you go. I was going to say, that's the new, that's the new like, uh, you know, clickbait uh, discussion. You know, the biggest streamers are ruining your discoverability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they are they're pricks <laughs> How <could Yeah>. they? <laughs> I, I will say this on the topic though and this is like a really this one frustrates me so much with small streamers mm. this is one of the worst small streamer takes ever is that there are so many small streamers who think that they're doing a good deed and think that they're better than others if they go and watch small streamers and <laughs> i think it's so toxic for the assumption to be running around being like I watch someone with zero viewers. I watch I watch this person and I made their day. I did a good <laughs> deed. I did this. And then you get all the people <laughs> commenting back on the tweet or on the subreddit being like, man, a small streamers are so much better. I can't stand <laughs> watching a big streamer. Even a hundred viewer streamers, it sucks compared to what yeah. a small streamer can do, right? And they get so angry and toxic or they try and belittle people and they I don't know how anyone could enjoy a hundred viewer streamer or a 200 viewer streamer. And it sucks, right? Because at the end of the day, if someone wants to watch someone because they like them, mm -hmm. why the fuck should you shit on them? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, why, why, I don't understand why that became a gloatable thing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I watched, I only watch f people with five viewers. Okay. <laughs> Come but on now. The interesting thing is these same people, right? <laughs> yeah. Will comment to their favorite streamer, right? Though, so I had a few people um, and they don't watch me anymore and they won't watch this. So I don't care. I'll say it. I had a few people who used to watch me when I had, 25 to 50, 25 to 80. And they'd say things like, ah, if you get any bigger, I probably won't watch you. Yep. And it's like, yeah. oh, why, 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 why don't you, why, 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 why don't you want me to get any bigger? Why don't you want me to be more successful? And they go, well, I just feel like, you know, you're not really my streamer anymore. You're like, you're like everyone's. And it's, and it's like, and I'd always say to them, I was like, even now I'm not your streamer. I'm making content for the collective. Right. Yeah. Like, and it's like, and, and if you enjoy these streams and my content and you want to see more of them, then you should kind of be excited for me to get bigger. Because if I sit at 50 to 80 viewers and I never get bigger than this, mm -hmm. I probably will have to quit very soon and go get yeah. a real job. Like, That's it. Yeah. Like, but they're, they're just, it's so deaf to think that someone doesn't want you to be successful. Like the, it's one of those things as well where it's like um, you see this back in like high school and stuff. It's like the Kings of Leon have sold out, man. You know, now that they've got big Ooh, and everything, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, the, I only really liked them when they were kind of indie and, you know, weren't really known. That was when they were cool and actually made art. It's exactly like that. Success immediately comes into like tall poppy syndrome where they just have to cut you down and like, you yeah. are the streamer that I used to know, you know, it's that weird kind of um, approachability of like you're mine and if I don't view you as an equal or as what you used to be, then you're lesser. And it's yep. such a toxic mindset that when you talk about our Twitch and there are those people and there obviously aren't those people that do that. But on our Twitch, when it's the people like I only go into zero viewer streams or five viewer streams, it becomes a thing where I feel that they're saying that because they themselves are streamers. They themselves have this amount of viewers and they're saying more people should come into my streams 100%. through that. Yeah, I, I did a video. Absolutely. Yeah, I did a video, and in it, I show, I, sh I try and show them how undiscoverable they've made themselves by mm. essentially saying, like, let's take a look at these categories. And it was one of my very first like big videos that blew up was uh, like was how to get to twenty five average viewers, and it was a concept of showing category choice, right? As we talked about mm. earlier, and I showed them those four big saturated categories they all stream in, and I scrolled 
I scrolled to the bottom of all of those categories and I couldn't get there. I, and then we worked out there was something like 12,000 people streaming Minecraft at that stage, 11,000 in Valorant. <laughs> and majority of them were under three, under five viewers, right? Yeah. And I, and I said in the video, I was like, guys, if you're brand new, you're just starting out, you have zero viewers or you have two viewers or three viewers even, you are number 11,567th in this list. And you've just watched me scroll at 10 times speed so that my 30 to 40 minutes of scrolling could be shown to you in 30 seconds. Do you really think someone is going to discover you? And the comments I got back were delusional. Like most yeah. of them were like, oh my God, I didn't even think about it. But then I got so many people being like, uh, LJ, there's a sort from lowest <laughs> to highest. <laughs> And I was like, oh God, nobody uses that. <laughs> oh God. Like, nobody uses that. That is only used when there is a big streamer who wants to go. There's only two times that's used. The big streamer going, hey guys, I'm giving $10,000 away to a bunch of lucky zero viewer streamers today. Yeah. And I'm going to get a bunch of clout from it. They're going to get a bunch of viewers for a week and then they're back to zero viewers. And yep. then the second time it's used is when people want to make a fucking Goodwill post on Twitter mm. or on, on Reddit to say, I made someone's day today. Yeah, that's right. I'm a good person because I want to serve you, which I think, fuck yeah, dude, if you love it, go for it. Yes. You don't need to well, make the post. <laughs> the next Messiah, you went to watch a five viewer streamer. <laughs> they, get, they, they get like 2000 upvotes and there's hundreds of comments calling them like for praise. And like, it's like, you know, if, if you're watching them because they've got zero viewers, man, yeah. You're not really being honest with yourself there either, right? Because it's just the meta, isn't it? They just want to create their own narrative of look how good I am. You know, I'm giving they, back to the community. <laughs> and really, you're doing it for yourself. When you see those posts, like I know that I see through them and I'm like, you know, well done. But we know why you're doing it. We know mm. why you're doing it. Yeah. Like, and don't get me wrong, like, there are people that will generally prefer. More, like smaller stream, and when I say smallish, I mean like, yes, be, like I'm talking between about the twenty. Here, yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm saying yeah, yeah, but no, because like um, no, because it happened to me. It's happened to friend. Like I've happened to a friend of mine where the same thing, where people said to him like, oh, "I'm not going to really watch anymore. You're getting too big," kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and um, right, but like yeah, bye. so pe people. People would pr prefer, like, they, they, they want a bit more of that interactivity. Obviously, as you grow, it's harder to interact with every single person. That's just a fact, and you've got to live with that. And um, and look, and it's totally fine if people, you know, but at the end of the day, you'd hope that they still enjoy your content enough to, you know, watch, like, like just that maybe they just kind of fade into, like, a lurker. Um, mm, yeah. But, but yeah, they, but these kinds of people, they're essentially just twi like Twitch hipsters. Like, oh, yeah, I like watching indie channels. You yes. Know, like, <laughs> that I can is talk such to. a good example. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's like their end game, you know, like when people say that to me, Marvel because I, I haven't had it often, but I've had the thing of like, if you get bigger, man, I'm not watching. Like, I think we've all had it to a degree. Mm. But to me, it's like, how do you want me to respond to that? There's two cho choices here. One, sorry to see you go. Or two, Okay, you're right. I don't want to lose you as a viewer. Everybody leave. I want to get under 50 right now so that Sniper, you know, uh, Sniper Pot XX69 stays and watches my, my channel. Yeah. You know, like, what's the end game of saying that to me? Like, think I, before you yeah. do. Yeah. It's, honestly, yeah. I, think, I think they just want to get a little bit of attention in, in that moment. Um, and honestly, I, this is something that I've really been dealing with over the past uh, few weeks. And it's only this last week that I've started to become very confident in my decision. And essentially, I decided coming into the new year, I think I've mentioned this before, that I was going to heavily focus on making content for the collective, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than trying to answer every single message, I would pick one or two messages out, I'd greet people, I'm not going to ignore anyone, I'm not actively no. trying to ignore people. But if someone says something, I'm not just going to read it out, respond, and then move on to the next one. I'm going to try to yeah. use it to inspire a story or a big bit of content. I think one of the things for you, like looking at your channel, LJ, and kind of, I know a lot of people go to you because you make these amazing videos on YouTube about how to grow your channel, things like that. You must get asked the same question each and every hour on the hour, probably even more so than that, where it's like, I would love to answer this and I'm not ignoring you, 
but I've answered this so many times and there's so many videos that you can watch that I will bring nothing new. I will just be a repeated broken record. And I think you're very smart in the terms of like, you have to set a precedent now of, I would love to be this go-to guy, but I've allocated X amount of time on Mondays to answer these questions. Now's not the time. Have they yep. taken, like, what's been, what would you say is the feedback from that? Are most people accepting or are most people kind of like, you know, they just keep silent for the rest of it? So one of the, so I've, you guys know, I've talked about this before that I took a big dip. I used to be 200. I'm now 120. It doesn't really bother me much because I'm happier now as well. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to do other things. But also one of the things that happened was around that time was also when I put my foot down and started saying to people, hey, I'm only going to answer streaming related stuff and talk about streaming related stuff right at the start of the stream. Or you can do it, you know, in the stream scheme discord rather than answering people whenever. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did just peace out. Yeah. They just pieced out, right? But at the same time, I, my regulars are much happier, right? Like my, the people who found me from streaming are much happier. The people who actually like my content are much happier. Yeah. And I'm also much happier because in the middle of Skyrim, while I'm trying to like make jokes about a frightened woman jumping off the cliff, I don't have <laughs> someone saying to me, LJ, LJ, you said just you said to stream Stardew Valley and I streamed it, but it, none of the people watched me after <laughs> when I went to Apex Legends. I'm really sorry about asking that question, by the way, LJ. I didn't know it was the wrong I time reaped, to do I so. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's like, I, I'm learning on timing. Look, Could it's fine. But no, essentially, <laughs> and then this year, I said to one of my mods, I said, I'm coming back Tuesday. And this is the rule. Nighttime streams, I am not going to answer a single streaming related question. I am, I'm not going to do it during the just chatting section. I'm not going to do it doing it during the game. And if I, people don't respect me saying to them, hey, man, I'm sorry, I'm not going to answer that right now, then they can fuck off. Like I, I said to them, I was like, I'm, I'm done doing it at night times. It's not what I want to do. But most importantly, if I become one of those streamers who all they do is do streaming related content on YouTube, and then when they're live, they just do channel reviews, all that stuff like that, um, then I'm never going to learn anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is my mm -hmm. big thing is that I want to be a content creator who I, all of my videos are purely based on, I have tested it, it worked or it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Here are the things that I came yeah. across that fucked me up or, or did really well for me. And I realized I started getting to a point where I wasn't doing anything new. I was, I was like, I had no new information to give people. And I, I, that's when I started changing up my stream so I could test things again. And while it's hurt my viewership a lot, I'm also going into this year with a lot of really good ideas. My go yeah. lives have tripled in clicks, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I'm doing so many other things that I can do. But of course, then I get people asking the same question. What is the best mic to stream with? I got the HyperX Quadcast, which by the way, they always buy the HyperX Quadcast. Why? It's one of the worst. <laughs> it's one of the most expensive and just basic mics ever. It's a classic <laughs> condenser microphone with an overly sensitive <laughs> coil and it's cardioid and it, it's bad for non-treated rooms. And they sit there and they go, yeah, I bought it. And I go, why? And they go, oh, here, it's a good mic. And I go, no, you bought it for RGBs, bud. You bought it because it's red, <laughs> red, green, blue, and it lights up. And they'll be like, well, you're, you recommended the Samson Q2U to me. And I'll be like, yeah, I did. I recommended you a dynamic microphone with XLR and USB so you don't have to worry about upgrading it later. It's 80 to 100 bucks Australian, so even cheaper mm -hmm. for US. And it has amazing noise, uh, noise shielding because it's a dynamic microphone and it's purely mm -hmm. designed for vocals. And they'll be like, yeah, but it looks ugly. <laughs> Fuck, Clearly, mate. HyperX is doing their marketing right if everyone's coming in saying that that's Dude, the mic that they've facts. bought. Samson needs to slap facts. some RGBs on their microphone and they'll, they'll be fine. Money, man. That's it's all about gosh. presentation, you know? But, but you bring up, like, a good point. Like, Nick, we, in terms of, like, we all have an endeavor this kind of year to make more uh, uh, content creation outside of the Twitch, more evergreen things. What's, like, a good balance of you know work life and content creation because at the moment we've just been discussing people that do like 300 hours of streaming and then they have a whole swath of like people editing for them and stuff well we don't really have that i mean you can hire people yeah. but it's going to be expensive i don't think i've got the budget to do their kind of means so what, what yeah. what's your tactic going in so I can well, steal it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, fi find yourself an Izzy, does it? <laughs> so I'm very lucky. So uh, for a while now, Izzy, who's one of my mods, um, so for, she's had a lot of time in her hands. Um, went, and uh, essentially I uh, pay her a bit of money every month and she helps out with editing like my tick, like the videos that get turned into shorts and TikToks. And um, we're basically working together, looking at the stats, how things are performing and we just essentially, you know, work towards what we'll, how how we want to go, and uh, and like 
letting her edit a lot of that stuff help, helps me free up time for, for me and to brainstorm new ideas and try new things and work on other endeavors that I want to work on. And it just kind of all feeds into that cycle. So I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, obviously, not everyone's going to have that luxury to, to be able to pay pay an editor or anything. But mm-hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's like as I'm growing the YouTube channels, as that money comes in, that money can then help pay her and that continues on. But I think at, to find the right balance, you need to look at everything that you got going on in your life. Okay, all right. What are the mandatory things happening in life? Like, are you working a full-time job? Are you working a part-time job? What hours are that? What days are it? Just essentially just plan everything out on a calendar and then kind of like, like puzzle pieces, fit everything in, allocate time to, you know, work on YouTube content or make some, you know, edit videos for TikTok. Like you've got to just essentially just plan out your life, but at the same time, still making sure you give yourself time to, for yourself and, and a time every week where, you know, you can actually hang, you know, spend time with family or, or friends or catch up with people. So it's just about kind of looking at your week, how many, how much time in your week do you have around your mandatory things like your job? If you, if you work and kind of just starting from there, just building it out. Agreed. Yeah. I, I, every single month I do a thing. Um, if you want to sound smart, people call it the Pareto principle. Um, mm-hmm. I call it the Siggy method because the <laughs> idea is it's called an 80, 20 split. And you look at all of your success that you've had in a month, right? And this is how I do it. You look at all your success you had in a month and you figure out what caused that success. And you'll usually find about 20% of the work you do causes the majority of your success, right? So as a content creator, usually about 20% of what you do is actually what's causing you to grow your channels, right? Um, That 20% could be your YouTube channel. That 20% could be your TikTok channel, whatever it is. Every month you do your Pareto principle or your Siggy method um, and you decide what works for you, right? And that has always been the biggest thing for me because I do this, this method and I go, cool, okay, this month I actually saw some TikTok growth. But did it help me whatsoever? No, I'm not going to bother with this anymore. Did uh, Stream Scheme, uh, did Stream Scheme, uh, if I'm talking just Stream Scheme's channel, it's like what made it so these videos were successful? Was it the editing? No. Was it the Was it the release time? No. Was it the scripting? Yeah, it was. Okay, I'll spend two and a half, three weeks working on scripts now rather than, you know, just doing a script a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like this is a massive thing for me is I spent three weeks on a script and in that three weeks before I even filmed, I also made the thumbnail and I made the title for it and I made sure all of it connected together, released it, and that was the video that did 200,000 views in a month, right? Ooh, doggy. And that's the concept, right? Is like you think about what is the most important part of all of this and that is what I'm going to devote most of my energy to, right? Yeah. Because the problem I have is I may have enough hours in the month to make a TikTok every day, to make a video every single week, and to do all that stuff, but I do not have the mental space to do it. Yeah. I can't. I just can't do it, man. I I, I tried to make a TikTok every day while I still kept editing my YouTube side of things. Yeah. I, I, I stopped editing YouTube because I had to do a TikTok every day. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, I just yeah. couldn't do it. And I've just hired an editor to handle my gaming channel because I couldn't split my focus between the gaming channel and the uh, stream scheme channel. Like I tried for months there and it caused stream scheme to stop uploading for three weeks at a time. Right. Like, yeah. And it didn't make the gaming channel upload more. It just meant that I had, I was spending more time between them and getting less done. Um, so that's my big you, focus. I always try and find what works and then, and then the rest of it, get away from me. Yeah. Someone else handle it. That's the smartest a, that's thing. About, yeah. Yeah. I think it's all about scale. I think if, if you're starting out or you just sort of like a lot smaller, like maybe you're in that sort of 20 average viewer range, like I think it's, it's about scale. It's kind of looking at what are you doing for your YouTube channel? What kind of stuff are you posting on? Like you look at, look at all your content platforms. Like what are you actually posting? What's funding it? Is it just your stream stuff or whatever? And then just kind of, start at a small scale. And then as you grow, you then you can start to scale it up. And then, hey, maybe, you know, some of that money that you're getting from your Twitch payout, or maybe you've got your YouTube channel to like to monetization level after a long time, some of that AdSense money can come in and you can start to reinvest that. And then you can start to pay people for a few edited videos. And then as that cycle grows, as you can start earning more income, then you can start to bring on editors more, more and more. So I think it's just, it's, I think when it comes down to, it's just about scale. Yeah. hundred percent. So with you, Mm. yeah, with you LJ. So like you've had stream scene going and it's been going amazing, but because you're dedicating so much time to it, you don't have time for like, yeah, for your other channels. So, but you're in a position where you're just able to hire editor and and let them focus 
on that. So Part of yeah. was finding think, a yeah. good one. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. And you bring up a good point there in terms of finding a new one. We talked about this, LJ, as well, in terms of, you know, TikTok growth and everything. And you made a very good point that the best editors for your channel are the ones that usually come from within your community. And that's not necessarily that's in there. skill, but in understanding <laughs> the content. Yes. That's a big exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They know yeah. what, what shows off your best assets as it were in terms of, they know that this is fine. They know that this is your brand because if I give my, like to say, I give a two hour stream to an editor that I don't know, they can focus on me swearing. They can focus on me. I don't know, being nice to chat. They can focus on me dying in the game. They have got so many variables to go yeah. and, you know, cut a video from. But if they're from your community and they know exactly what it is that is your strength compared to your weakness and they're good at what they do, they are going to grow immensely because of it. And obviously you as well. So you make a really good point there that you really do have to find people who understand what you're bringing to the table and how to show it effectively and astutely at the same time. I think it's also yeah, guidance I, yeah. as well, mm -hmm. right? Like, like uh, one of yeah. the things I kept finding was I was talking to all these really skilled editors who weren't necessarily in my community. And while they were skilled editors, they weren't in my community. So they didn't quite get the grasp on things, right? Yeah. But uh, the, one of the people who reached out to me, I won't say his name because I got to confirm if he even wants his name attached to the videos, but I want to give him credit when it comes out. But essentially, uh, he reached out to me ages ago, but I wasn't really in the stage to look for an editor. But I went through all these application processes where people just didn't quite fit. And then I reached back out to him because he hadn't applied and said, hey, man, just a heads up. I do have these apps open. Were you still interested in this? He's like, oh, my God, yes. I just didn't even see it. Right. And he's not necessarily directly in my community, but he's watched a few of my streams. It's just time zone stuff. Yeah. And um, and I'm not going to he's not, this isn't an insult, but he's not the bee's knees of editing. He's a good mm -hmm. editor. He's clearly got experience, um, yeah. but I'm not saying he's like a pro YouTube editor, right? Yeah. And I think that that's actually kind of perfect because I'm not a pro gaming video maker, right? Yeah. I'm, I, I come from a marketing background. I come from a teaching background, which is why I do so well on streams game is because that is my niche, right? Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people love to say things like, well, if you can't do, you teach. And it's not true in any way because you don't want LeBron James trying to teach someone because he probably has terrible <laughs> communication skills. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> like you need someone who has the ability to communicate to an absolute beginner rather than just being like, yeah, you throw the ball. Right. <laughs> and so yes. anyway, so he, he's, he isn't the best, right. But he's decent and I can see a diamond there. Right. And I'm, I'm working with him and I'm super excited because he sent me the rough cut for the first video we're doing today. And I can see all the bones, right? Like I can mm -hmm. see the bones, I can see the muscle, I can see he gets it. And now it's a matter of together. He can go, Hey man, that was really hard to edit because you did X. And then I can be yeah. like, no worries. I totally feel you. I'll do that better next time. Hey, can you also make sure you do YZ and all this, right? And I feel like it's such a better option to bring someone in who isn't an absolute pro and provide guidance and allow them to skill up and give them creative freedom as well, right? Like yeah. just be like, you do yeah. whatever you want. Show me the edit and try and make it as on brand as possible and, and improve yourself as well, right? Like, and I'll yeah. pay you to do it. I'll pay you to improve yourself. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to I'm, do with this guy. That's exactly yeah. it. I've got two editors, um, one that I actually found from Fiverr and one who's from within my community. And both of them are really good. But it's very interesting that you bring up the point of um, you see kind of where your weaknesses are. Like one of my weaknesses was that when I recorded, I forgot that one of my tracks um, uh, didn't have exclusively the music. It was to another track, so it was laid. So it, w when it cut, it just sounded super odd. And I was like, I got to fix that. I got to have no music when I do this segment. And it became so much easier because of it. And I think a big trap that a lot of people go into, like big content creators, is that when you start off with doing streaming, it's your baby. And mm, nobody else yeah. can hold your baby. Uh, and then they are scared of going out, reaching out and going, yo, can you do this to me? Can you do this to me? Because they want to be completely their vision. Everything they did was um, by themselves, but it's just not practical. If you want to grow, you do not have enough hours in the day. You don't have en enough hours in like 10,000 years to do exactly what you want to do. You have to give faith and trust in other people because they're going to teach you things that you don't know. And obviously you're going to expand from that in terms of, holy moly, you just opened my eyes to something that I've been doing wrong the whole time just by saying that. So really expand yeah. out. Don't just collaborate with other streamers to do a streaming thing of like, let's play X together. Look at other people, artists, graphic designers, editors, because they can grow your brand so much. Yep. Yeah. I I uh, had a similar experience with with you, LJ, with with your editor. So like 
Izzy actually had never really done any editing before. And it, it all started from just her having some extra time and wanting to help out. So she was already wanting modding for me. And she's like, oh, like I'll, I'll help out. Like just started like from editing, just helping me ed- like edit a single TikTok like every week. And so she downloaded DaVinci. And then as she started to get into it, she's like, wow, I really like this. And then she put her own time into learning how to like the software better, watching editing tutorials and to get, and then I've, like I've been editing for a long ass time as well. So then I've been helping her grow, grow her editing skills and help her sort of, I guess, if you want to call it like a YouTube editor, I guess, like the, like, mm. um, I just and kind it's of a like, certain style. That's what I reckon. Yes, I think YouTube is editing a, is a certain style. Yes, mm. is a very certain style. And so, yeah, and together it's taken us a lot of time, but that time that we've invested together has, has definitely paid off. And, like she is like, she's so great. And she's, she's got even more progress to like to go. Like she's already great now. And I can see that she's going to get even better as time goes on. Like, you know, every time she'll make one, like she's always improving on every like video she does, whether it's just like a TikTok or whether it's like a, you know, an edited let's pray thing. And, you know, we, we, I will review things and I'll be like, Oh, you know, maybe we could like add a cheeky meme here or a sound effect or something. And that she takes on that and then keeps it in mind for the future. And, you know, nowadays, most times she'll send me things to review and I'm just like, that's great. Make this minor tweak or that's perfect. That's, that's good. So even if, even if someone's near, not great off the bat, but they, you see a bit of potential, they kind of know your content you can give them a chance, you know, and look at yeah. the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but it's it, as long as you can give someone a chance and it might pay off. So it's, and look, not everyone's going to be lucky where they have someone in their community who has the time or the skill or the knowledge or the, or the, the actual desire to, to do that kind of thing. Mm, but yeah. you know, either, either have to talk to people in your community, ask like, does anyone know how to edit, you know, put the word out there or, yeah, no, try. Yeah. You just do your best to look around until you find someone that kind of works. I think you Definitely. encourage competitions as well. I think you encourage like meme competitions or like you encourage like, Oh, Photoshop me in this environment or, you know, that kind of thing. And you'll actually start to see who in your community already has those experiences and has fun with it as well. Because yeah. a lot of the time, the same thing is if you're editing a clip of someone to be a meme compilation for a, a Monday meme review that's happening on stream, you're pretty much already doing the uh the tiktok clip right like you already yeah. are pretty much doing the same thing and you can do those and find someone who meets your brand and 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 then go from there but i think it's super interesting but essentially like those focuses and that scaling is is everything right like that's the biggest thing small streamers the big takeaway is essentially don't stream hours upon hours and hours on end mm-hmm. right do your pareto principle right figure out exactly how much time you have to devote to this compared to the rest of your life Figure out what is actually going to do the best for you, what's working for you, where your skill set is. Are you a creative writer? Go to Reddit, post creative writing for your streams. Turn your Skyrim streams into a creative writing experience for someone to read, right? Are you an artist? Go and go do some speed painting live on stream where you paint Master Chief and then go and post the art on R Halo or R whatever it is and put in the top comment. By the way, I did this live and I also made a video which is a sped up speed painting with some nice music of the art, right? Like we live in this age of streaming where every single coach seems to say to people, go start a YouTube channel. I know Harris Heller says it all the time and this isn't an insult against him. Mm -hmm. But the concept of starting a YouTube channel for all of these beginners, I don't think any of them will be able to do it. Like I think 1% out of the people who try to start a YouTube channel because of the advice, start a YouTube channel, will actually manage to do it in any way that's successful. Because most of them don't have the equipment, but again, you don't need it, but they don't have the experience. You can learn, but they don't have the opportunity either, yeah. right? Like I'm blessed to have had the opportunity where I can learn all this stuff, work with people and be taught these things from when I was in uni to when I worked professionally as a filmmaker. But you know what? Most people from what I've seen don't even have a working smartphone in the comment sections of these videos that I'm doing, right? And yeah. so the assumption of just go start a YouTube channel. Most can't. Right. Yeah. And streaming is an easier thing to get into. But you know what all know what else? They can easily turn on clips. They can make mm-hmm. clips and they can share those clips. And if you're a new streamer, that's my that's probably my biggest thing. And I think a lot of us, we've talked about this a lot as a group. Find what is your way to stand out, what your discovery is, and play to your own strengths. Right. And I, on another topic as well, which isn't on on the same thing. I can't stand when people just go live and just pretend to be someone because they think though they want to watch, they'll be like, Oh, well, people love watching the Yogscast or Summit, so I'll just do yeah. exactly what those guys do. 
But yeah. Why would we want to watch someone do what a large streamer does and who or what they what they what makes them interesting, but done badly? Right? Like, because you're yeah. mimicking and you can never do as well as the original. Correct. It's like yes. when you see those crappy parody movies. Remember back in the day, I was like, uh, Crappy, what? how dare you? There was like <laughs> love movie and stuff. And it was just like, let's just put a person of Borat in the background and say his catchphrase. And that's funny, isn't it? And you're like, what yeah. the hell am I watching? And it is exactly like that. And I think we've done like a round thing. It's like, you see the top streamers, 200, 300 hours a month, but they obviously have how many people working for them on different mm. avenues, on different uh, I should say mediums while well, there's the people who are starting out. And I think the, the big takeaway is that please put yourself first and not your aspirations first of becoming a big time streamer. You've got mm. to be sensible. Like LJ was saying, and like Nick was saying, there's a guy who comes in and is like, I quit everything to do streaming. Sure. I've only done it for a few weeks and I may hate it within another week, but I'm just going to go, you know, throw caution to the wind. And that's great. If you're in a position that you can do that you've got the finances to fund yourself for x amount of time but i would say a lot of people don't and a lot of people do quit their jobs on this kind of you know fantasy of becoming like xqc i didn't yeah. i didn't quit for two years or whatever oh i'm coming up to two years now i didn't yeah. quit at all for the first year i streamed for an entire year worked two full-time jobs as well as my own personal contractor job where i went around and did filming and editing and all that stuff like that yeah and i was doing like 18 hours of work every single day, including like, you know, my three to four hour stream, sometimes longer, my two hours of planning for it, my day jobs, I would answer support tickets for my other job at like midnight till 2am. Mm -hmm. And I was so scared. Like, I don't yeah. know how people have the confidence to just throw caution to the wind. I was so scared. And I, I don't recommend doing what I did. But it worked for me, sure, but it doesn't mean it work for everyone. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't quit until a year in. I didn't quit until I had earned enough money that I was earning double what I earned from my other three jobs on as a content creator. So yes. I worked for a year, YouTube channel did well, Twitch was starting to do really well, and I had sponsors now and I was earning double what I did from my other jobs. So I was able to say I've earned double now for three months. That was my sign where it was time for me to try to take this full time and quit everything else. Right? Crazy. And that's yeah. what I said. I said, I said, I said, I said, finish line, a goal. And as soon as I hit that, then I was allowed to go full time. And I just, I couldn't imagine, but also I was in a, a place where I had to be responsible for my wife as well, like, and uh, yeah. rent and a lot of other things and my family. So everyone's different, but man, I, I, I don't know how people can do it. I think they are just, no. as you said, matching big streamers. They yeah. should, you should never throw caution to the wind. Like, yeah, sure. A lot of creators, you know, that like, you know, that we, that we not obviously know about, like a lot of them have, you know, even like big YouTubers as well. Like a lot of them, you know, took risks, right? And people look at the thing, oh, but they took the risk. But think about how many people took mm -hmm. that same risk and it did, didn't work. Yeah, mm -hmm. Survi it, what's it called? Survivor. It's called survivor bias. Yeah. And yeah. It's, you, you only That's see it. the people who survived. You don't see yeah, all the people who survived. The struggled. only example exactly. are the ones that are successful because the ones that fail, you never hear of because who hears about people that never made it. Mm. Exactly, exactly. So there's probably countless, countless people that, you know, they took levels like, oh, yeah, I'm going to quit my job and just do this. And then it's just like, Oh, sh like, oh, crap. Yeah. Like, uh oh, this isn't working. I'm, what, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm running out of money. <laughs> and then, you know, they, they give it up, you know, or they just kind of stick to it as a, as a side hobby. So, like, you just, you can't, you need to be responsible for yourself. Yeah. I agree. Like, I, think um, we've, I think we've done a really, really good job. I'll be honest. We did intro, our goals, mm -hmm. what we learned. Then mm -hmm. we started talking about how many hours these people are doing. They're grinding contracts, everything. Talked about how small streamers are mimicking them. Talked about balance. Yeah. Talked about what we think you should focus on and finding your own, like what your unique discovery is. Yeah. And, and just a bit of random stuff in between. Guys, I think we've done a, a pretty damn good podcast today. I think you know what, what you're saying is that people That's should solid. click that subscribe button like straight I, away and because it's so. a weekly yeah. podcast. Mm. Yeah. But I also think maybe they should leave a comment asking questions and we'll answer yes. them. Does that sound? Yeah, that's yeah. a great yeah. idea. Do you think about that just then? That's you know, crazy. I, I just came up with that. Like they could wow. totally wow. They could tweet this it to us mental. or put it in the YouTube comments. Yeah. Do you mean we're going to show attention to like a few so special people that are going to comment? <laughs> yeah, we're going to yeah, read every single message, question. and that's how we're going to grow is from giving everyone attention rather than going to the collective. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. This is the a great idea. Of what we've said. <laughs> Well, um, I, I've, I've been rapes it on the stream room and obviously joining me is the beautiful LJ Nictacula. Any final words, boys, before we hit the old uh, end stream? I just, I just want to say, by the way, 
if you've watched this or listened to this and you in any way feel insulted, called out, or felt like we were being harsh to small streamers, please understand and take it that everything we've said today is purely a cautionary tale in that we aren't saying you're bad for doing it. We're not saying you're wrong for doing it. We're simply saying that it's very tricky, this entire environment. Doing more hours, doing all these different things requires balance and responsibility. And we just want to make sure that the majority of people out there who hear this don't hurt themselves or don't drop the ball on important responsibilities for their family and themselves. That's all it is. And their health as well. They want to see the biggest thing, their health and their mental health by doing yes. insane things. So I hope that this hasn't come across as harsh and has instead just come across as a group of people who see every single day so many people trying this and the small amount that are succeeding and wanting to make sure that people do it responsibly rather than end up getting hurt. I think yeah. that's just, I think I don't need to say it, but disclaimer, you know? Agreed. Yeah, work, work smart towards your goals, but don't give up your life in the process. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And yeah, sorry if it. I talked over anyone today. I'm deaf in my left ear. <laughs> yeah. it is Are you really? Funny. Just just for the last few days, I've got a really bad ear infection that's just shut the whole mm. thing down. I can't hear oh. it very well. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. But, uh, either way, thank you for the podcast, guys. It was great. Yes. Thank, yeah, thank and you we so will much. See, yeah, and we will see you all uh, next week, or rather you can hear us talk next week. But uh, for now, we say adios and uh, have a lovely week of streaming. I hope. Peace. Ta-ta.